What's your question, brother? Okay. Um, the moon. Uh. <laughs> What's the deal with the moon? <laughs> yeah, in the Bible. Uh, so, uh, I'll try to make it uh -huh. kind of specific. Uh -huh. But, um, let me see, I had it in the Psalm uh, okay, so Psalm 72.5, uh. uh, it says, They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure mm -hmm. throughout all generations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's some other passages as well that talk about it, but um, there's a verse that says that uh, there's, no, there's not going to be any... I don't know if that's after the millennium. Mm -hmm. um, but my question is, when there's no more like darkness, mm -hmm. when Jesus Christ is the light, mm -hmm. uh, the light that I love, mm -hmm. and in the millennium, what is going to be the purpose of the moon? So once uh, Jesus Christ, he comes out um, and gets rid of the sun and the moon, you're wondering what's the purpose during the timeline of eternity, right? After the millennium, is that correct? Well, I guess in the, in the millennium, <clears throat> there's still going to be nighttime. Okay, I see. All right, so what passage was that? Psalms what? 72. Psalm 72.5. Okay, let me read that. Mm -hmm. And then also in verse 7, it talks about as long as the moon endureth. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay, uh, let's read context here. That way I can make sure. Psalm 72.4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his day shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from uh, the rivers unto the ends of the earth. Yeah, okay, S uh, simple. I think I got the answer here. So the book of Psalms right over here. So look at verse 1. It's given unto who? The king's son, right? So we see over here uh, Jesus Christ ruling over the nation of Israel. And then you notice that when he rules over Israel... Israel is promised a physical kingdom. They're going to get their reign. And when you read your whole Bible, the mention is at the millennium, which is a thousand years long. So Israel will, room, will rule as supreme with Jesus ruling. How long will Jesus rule over this place? As long as the moon endure. Did you read that? So notice right here it says as long as the moon endure. So um, in the millennium, what you've got to understand is that it will be natural to think that there is still sun and there is still moon. You might say, why? Because the Bible never mentioned that the moon has gotten rid of that time. The Bible shows that the sun, moon is over there that time. Not only that, there's even rain, the Bible says. At the book of Zechariah, I think. Yes, yeah, so Zechariah, God's going to send the rain. So notice that everything is in its natural state. It's in its natural state. But what happens? What happens is when you read Second, uh, go to Second Peter now. Last book, uh, last chapter in the book of Second Peter. So Second Peter chapter three. We're going to look at Second Peter chapter three. That's online. <laughs> That's, that's All right, yeah, he, yeah, he has been. All right, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, notice what the Word of God says over here at verse uh, 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the what? Heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be what? Okay, so the moon and the stars are all in the second heaven, right? So you'll notice that because they're all in the second heaven, what's going to happen is that it's going to be uh, wiped out. So God's going to eliminate all of, uh, all of this. But when does he eliminate it? He eliminates it after the millennium because look at Revelation 20. This all co coincides with Revelation 20 through 21. 
So after the millennium, there's a timeline called eternity. Eternity. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, look at the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Notice what the Bible shows, that at verse 6, a thousand-year reign, right? There's your millennium. Notice uh, verse 9, God sends fire down from heaven and destroys everybody at the breath of the earth, right? That matches with 2 Peter 3, see, where the heavens and the earth is burned up with a fervent heat. How do you know they're gone? Because verse 11 shows it's gone. Saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the what? Uh, the earth and the heaven fled away. See, they're gone. They're all gone after that. But look at this. Then at Revelation chapter 21 verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So God sets up a new heaven and a new earth. Now here's the question though, okay? What will it be like? Well, if you look at Revelation chapter 21, Verse 22 through 23, look at this. Verses 22 through 23. I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the what? Sun, neither of the what? Moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. See, that's why. Uh, you'll also look at verse 5, uh, chapter 22, verse 5. There shall be what? No night there. That's where we get that song. Some of you don't realize that. We, we should sing it sometime, but I know my dad's church and I sang it. In the white hymn book, there's a song that uh, there is no night there. Uh, we've heard Sister Danielle singing, No More Night. So what do we mean by that? We mean as we say it. Amen. <laughs> Simple as that. We mean as we say it. So uh, notice over here that the sun and moon, they're all gone that time. Now, let's look at the, contra uh, the interesting contradiction, though. Look at chapter 7. All right, let's show you some interesting contradiction here. Look at verse 15 through 16. Verses 15 through 16. This shows that there must be some kind of sun-moon system going on. You're not just going to rule over here at the millennium, the earth. You're actually going to rule the sun and moon as well. Didn't you know that? Some of you didn't realize that. Yeah, so it's very possible you're going to rule the sun and the moon as well. You might say, ah, I don't believe it. Well, let's look at <laughs> well, let's look at some of the verses over here, all right? Yeah. Let's look at some of the verses over here where we might be ruling over the sun and the moon. Okay, let me give you an interesting thing, though, okay? The Lord's Prayer at the book of Matthew is actually known as a prayer for tribulation saints. Did you, read, did you pay attention to that prayer? Uh, uh, man, how does... Uh, uh, man, I forgot the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. How can I forget that? It's, uh, give us, yeah, that one. But uh, our Father, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not Catholic. Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, what? Kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as what? As it is in heaven. The Lord, the, look at. Uh, verses throughout your Bible. There are so many verses in the Bible that talks about the Lord ruleth over the what? Heavens. Yeah. All right. Now, let's look at this. Revelation chapter 7, verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him what? I thought there's no more night. Day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the what? Sun light on them, nor any heat. But it doesn't mean that the sun's not there. It says day and night they're going to be doing it, right? In his temple. Why? Because this is Revelation 7. And there's a temple. That's the key. Revelation 21 says what? No more temple. Why? For God is the temple. That's why there is no more night there. So that's why this thing's going to be gone. Well, wait a minute. I thought they're going to be ruling day and night at the temple. Tribulation saints. Mm -hmm. Right here. Millennium. Now, uh, look at this, okay? If you're still not convinced, look at 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Corinthians 3. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And then we'll look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3.
The book is an amazing book. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. That book's an amazing book. All right, let's uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Notice what happens to us when we reign with Jesus Christ. Look at verse 40. 1 Corinthians 15, 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. Notice what the Bible compares illustrates our, uh, our bodies when we get resurrected. And these bodies, they're going to rule during this timeline. And they're compared to what? The sun, moon, and the stars. Our glory is going to be like them. But uh, not only that, uh, the Bible shows that 1 Corinthians 3, which is uh, the most convincing part, verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. You Christians got a huge blessing right now that you can claim. But you're not claiming it. Therefore, let no man glory in man for what? All things are belong to who? Yours. Whether what? Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. What? All are yours. Why? Because and ye are Christ and what? Christ is God's, that's why. Does not Christ own everything? Amen. All right. Aren't you a part of Christ? Yes, sir. You're going to own everything. Literally. That's something. Do you think Revelation 22 was lying when it says an inheritance of all things then? It ain't lying, man. Wow. It ain't lying. That's your inheritance. How many want to lose that for a small portion of the world when all things are supposed to be yours? All right, now get to work and serve Jesus Christ, okay? 